The kingdom of God is your father's kingdom. It's your father's kingdom. You know, at the age of 12, Jesus said to Mary, his mother, he said, did you not know I would be about my father's business? He was so conscious. You see, all the things we achieve for ourselves in this earth, will amount to nothing. The only things that will have eternal value, if you're a businessman, you want to invest in things that will give you great returns. Great returns. And it's important to you plow your life in a direction that will have eternal value. And participation in the kingdom of God will bring you value in this life and much greater value in the life to come. It's a worthy investment. It's a worthy investment. So when you are in a local church, Get involved. Participate. Don't just come to church and go. It's very responsible. Very responsible. Find something to do for God. Get involved. Move your life. You see, come to church, get blessed, and go. Does not promote you. Your ultimate promotions and rewards come from involvement in your father's business. Involvement in your father's business. And you will be shocked that everything you need, God will give it to you. You'll be shocked. I'm telling you the truth. God will give it to you. You know, sometimes we pray, someone is praying for one year. He's praying for a husband for one year. For one year. Two years he's praying for a car, one car, one car. That's what he's praying for. For one, for two years, that's what he's praying for. And they get angry at people who are having different cars. But if you know what those people do for the kingdom, you'll be shocked. So learn to prioritize the kingdom of God. Okay? It will lift you out of poverty. If you're already out of poverty, it will promote you to higher levels. Yes, it will promote you to higher levels. God has attached incredible blessedness to involvement in his kingdom. Can I show you something? Mark chapter 10, verse 30. Peter said to Jesus, we have left everything and followed you. So we've lost out. All our friends are big boys now. All our classmates have gone way ahead of us. Jesus said, verse 30, that's where I am. And Jesus answered and said, Verily I say unto you, there is no man. Does God's word mean something to you? I'm asking a question. Does God's word mean something to you? There is no man. No man. Except Jesus is a liar. And if he's a liar, he's the best liar in the world. The worst of his kind. The worst deceiver there is. But he's not a liar. He's not, he doesn't just speak truth. He is truth. He said, there is no man. There is no, take him at his word. If he's lying, let him be cursed. I believe this scripture several years ago. Do 
There is no man who had left house of brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospels. He ties it to involvement in the gospel. You cannot be vitally involved in the gospel and be disgraced in life. If there's disgrace, it's only momentary. You'll be shocked. He said, it's not possible. So why is your life all about you? These people left everything. See, today, so, some of you named your children, your sons, Peter. Why? Peter sanctified that name by following Jesus Christ. Some of you will never call your children, your daughters, Jezebel. Why? Jezebel lived for herself and disgraced and, you, and totally, totally useless the name. Jezebel doesn't mean something bad, but nobody would dare call his son or his daughter Jezebel. You call your daughter Jezebel. What's your daughter's name? Jezebel. People will greet her from far. Say, that's your newborn daughter. You say, yes, what's her name? Jezebel. Jezebel. Yeah, that's what you see from far. Jezebel. They will not touch the baby again. Just because you called the child Jezebel, she followed Satan. He lived for herself. She ran her husband, ran the country, sought to kill a prophet. And look at how throughout history, that name has become useless. Go all over the world. In Nigeria, there is Peter. In America, Peter. South Africa, Peter. Ghana, Peter. Everywhere you go, Peter's everywhere. John, everywhere. James, everywhere. Paul, everywhere. Why? Names have been sanctified. Following Jesus Christ. Presidents have fought to immortalize their names. These people did not care about the immortality of their names. But as a natural consequence, it, was, it just happened. People have built monuments to their names. Believing that when they die, those monuments will remain. To speak of their glory. Those monuments have been destroyed. Go to Egypt. Pharaohs built monuments. Some made it bigger than that of their fathers. We don't know them. But we know Peter. We know James. We know John. Can I get a strong amen? You shall be known. I'm, I'm not hearing you guys. I say you shall be known. For following Jesus Christ. Walking closely with him. Taking the things of God seriously. Taking God seriously. You are in church. Participate. Win souls. Give. Help the work of God move forward. Don't sit there. You come to church. There's something new. You say, praise God. God did it. It wasn't God that did it. Somebody obeyed God. And you will obey God. Amen. God will use you to his glory. Amen. Can I get a strong amen? Amen. Supercharge, a shining light to the nations.